when we look at career, either with or without the transition, uh, it's not linear progression. Uh, sometimes you need to uh, take a step back to make step forward. Hi, Francis. Thanks so much for being here today. Uh, so first, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Uh, yeah, my name is Francis Fu. Um, I am a actuary converted sustainability professional. Uh, I used to work with me um, at Canada Life, and uh, uh, but now, yeah, I have uh, fully transitioned myself to work in the sustainability field. Um, and I've been um, an actuary for oh over a decade uh, before the transition. Uh, and um, I'm an F uh, FSA and FCIA. A little bit more personally about myself, uh, I'm a mother of uh, two children and uh, a dog. Um, and uh, I am very, uh, I love nature and the environment and I enjoy uh, working in my vegetable garden and uh, slightly obsessed about monarch butterflies. <laughs> nice. I would say a lot of us was uh, surprised when uh, we heard uh, when we heard about you like turning from actual field into sustainability field. Um, so, what made you decide to do that transition? Trans transition. Yeah, um, I've always uh, been like a, a nature lover and uh, strongly feel strongly about like protecting the environment. So that's kind of always like part of my life. And then during my uh, maternity leave uh, with my first uh, child, I started to, you know, in my spare time, volunteer with uh, different organizations, including some local grassroots environmental organizations on like tree planting and waste diversion and, you know, planting uh, native plants. And that really sparked more of my interest um and uh, you know while i love what i was doing and i continue to um uh volunteer with uh, local environmental organization it does help me like look at the broader picture about like the impact of climate change and uh it started to make me think like what can i do to magnify my impact and when we think about it globally like you know the financial industry is a huge huge player and have a lot of uh voice in terms of uh where the economy goes so i feel like uh instead of like just doing what i can on an individual level like i can make big, greater impact in, in uh, uh the industry by working full-time following my passion uh to transition into sustainability um and you know with a business background on like insurance and pension, I feel like it's uh, it's not only uh, it's a it's pretty natural transition that helped me to merge like my passion and my existing skill set and experience. That sounds pretty awesome, especially like uh, you follow your passion, right? You find your passion and then you continue to pursue it. So before we before we get into like maybe what you do and what people in this field do, like can you uh, define for us like what is like ESG or what is sustainability? Yeah, so we think of like we may think of sustainability as a newer term, but if we look at like history, like for thousands of years or hundreds of years, like fishermen they don't uh, fish all the fish in the ocean. And farmers, they don't repeatedly uh, plant the same crop uh, on the same piece of land. And for indigenous people, like for thousands of years, they have been teaching the value of like just taking what you need. So uh, for me, sustainability means that you're not just looking at, you know, your short term gain, but balancing short term versus long term impact. So that's what on a high level sustainability means to me. And in terms of ESG, uh, I think of it as like pillars that guide business in terms of their uh, sustainability practice. So they look at their environmental impact, they look at their social impact, and they look at how their government structure works to support the other pillars. Uh, and um, I, I see that as, you know, not an industry on its own. It's like a risk, like every business has a risk. 
and every business that has a environmental and social impact and they have a governance structure that guides business. Uh, so I, I think that as you know, a component that can be applied into any business context. That makes sense. And um, can you now uh, tell us more about like what kind of jobs can people do in this, or maybe perhaps your current job and responsibilities? Uh, yeah. So I think as we are, you know, the newer generation demands more about, you know, understand the value of the business, not just in terms of the service we provide, but the impact to the the entire society. I feel like, you know, ESG or sustainability can be, uh, as mentioned earlier, considered into any business. And in terms of where the bigger impact you can see is that a lot of uh, uh, companies in the financial industry, because they are large asset owners, uh, they have, you know, responsibilities from their investors or uh, uh, their their stakeholders to be like looking at how they're investing their money on behalf of their clients. So you, you can see that there's a lot of developments, uh, you know, in terms of bank uh, ramping up their ESG practice and disclosure, uh, the same as uh, pension plans as well as insurance companies and you'll see that there are like in, uh, increasing regulatory requirement for companies uh, to to disclose and to comply so I think it's a growing field in many different aspects and in terms of people that are already working in insurance or pensions um, you'll see that there is likely going to be increased uh, uh, focuses from uh, the, the regulatory agencies, for example, OSFI has released their pilot um, uh, climate scenario testing earlier in the year and also re, uh, 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 produced like educational guidance on uh, climate risk assessment. So I think that in terms of uh, people that are working in the industry, there are also like uh, more consideration, especially on the environmental side to be quantifying uh, climate risk and its business impact uh, for uh, for insurance companies and for pension plans. And as, as an actuary, you know that there are a lot of requirements that we had to go through in order to become qualified. So how about for people who are interested in the ESG or sustainability field? Like, are there any credentials or education requirements uh, for people who want to go into this? Um, I think it's because it's such a broad field, um, you'll see that or is like depending on your focus area, there will be different uh, credentials uh, that you can consider pursuing. And in the industry, I see a mix of people that, that comes from like, a, for example, environmental science or engineer background. And there's others that come from other background, but has a strong interest in and then uh, transitioned into the sustainability field. Um, so in terms of in the financial industry, uh, you could look at, for example, um, SASB, which now is part of IFRS, and they used to have what's called uh, uh, fundamentals of sustainability accounting. It might have uh, been renamed because of uh, merging of the two organizations or, or IFRS acquiring SASB. Um, so uh, it might be named differently, but that's like a fundamental course for understanding sustainability. Um, there is ESG investing from uh, the CFA, um, and there's also various uh, sustainable finance courses uh, provided from uh, leading universities in Canada. Uh, but I think, you know, it's if you have the interest, I think you can dive into, there's a lot of material, free material, uh, online that you can start with. And I think once you develop like a particular focus area you're interested in, then you can dive into what kind of certification um, there are. Uh, but one thing for sure is that it is a growing and developing industry. So uh, you will continue to learn. And, uh, and personally, I'm learning new things and new developments every single day. Mm, that's great. I would say it's similar to how you just mentioned, uh, like risks in every business, like this uh, sustainability in every business, and also similar to how uh, between the two is like similar in risk. You can maybe 
focus in actual science, you do more insurance risk, and you focus in like uh, CFA and then the more investment risk, but then people can also have accounting background or legal background, and then there will be like different niche field within the risk side. So it's also have different niche field within the sustainability uh, field. So what yeah. can interest a lot of people is, I guess the main thing is if you're into the, uh, you have this passion in ESG or in sustainability, then it can be an attractive uh, industry for people to work in. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So does having an actual insurance background help with your transition in the first place? Because I think if anything is like transition, maybe the, the hardest step first when going to another field. So um, what is your advice for people who want to make a transition who in similar situation with you? Yeah, so for personally, my transition stems from the passion and also from like examining myself like what kind of skill set I have to make greater impact in causes that I care about right so for me like obviously having a financial background having a uh, very strong technical skills um, it does it definitely definitely helped me in terms of transitioning into especially uh, talking about sustainable finance or helping uh, pension align with the TCFD requirement or assessing um, their net zero transition pathway, like having the technical skill, the business background, I think make it a very smooth transition. Uh, and I think it applies for many different contexts. I, I feel like a lot of the skills that we acquire, um, just the analytical skills, it makes transitioning into many, many fields uh, to be, I would say, possible if uh, if you have an interest in, in you know, expanding uh, your work. Um, and in terms of transition, like at my advice is that when we look at career, either with or without the transition, uh, it's not a linear progression. Uh, sometimes you need to uh, take a step back to make step forward. So way during my transition, I was in like, you know, a mid-management uh, role at an insurance company. And when I transitioned to sustainability, I'm new to the entire field. So it's quite obvious that I need to take a step back and start from an analyst role. Uh, but you can also think it as a great learning opportunity for you to acquire new skill set in different contexts and um, make mistakes and really uh, grow, like investing yourself to grow. So um, I would say that, yeah, sometimes just taking them not as a setback, but an opportunity to to grow in a different area. Um, and uh, yeah, so uh, sometimes you might have uh, internal or external pressure about like, you know, your career growth needs to be always going upward. And I would say, yeah, just uh, have an open mind to different opportunities. Yeah, that's excellent because uh, that would call me a picture where they say that the career growth, like people think it's linear like this, but actually it's like, do, 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 do. but as long as yeah. like, at the end of the day, you still like uh, growing by the end uh, compared to the start, that is good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And says so like, you know, you, you, your self can be the judge of how fulfilling you are from your career and the work that you do, right? So I think, yeah, you know, being your own judge and thinking about like, you know, am I growing myself? Am I learning more? Am I like experience more? And uh, I think that that's, uh, you can be your own judge until like to, to evaluate how successful you are. Right? Mm -hmm, absolutely. Uh, so any final advice for those who want to get started in this area? I think first of all, it's like, I, I made an entire transition to focus on it. And for people who are exploring, I think even in the insurance industry, there's a lot of knowledge that you could uh, acquire and advance within like the in insurance or pension. And uh, I'm also part of the CIA Climate Change and Sustainability Committee. And we have a lot of resource uh, under uh, the resource uh, section that you can explore. So I think starting from your own context, like magnify your voice within your own company about like, what are we doing with uh, 
climate risk? What are we doing in terms of diversity and inclusion? And uh, just exploring from there, and maybe you'll discover that you have a very strong passion and want to focus on it 100%. And what do you do? I would say, talk to a lot of people and understand what they do and see what, like, you know, narrow down the focus area that you want to work on. And I would say, take the leap of faith and, uh, you know, follow your heart. Yeah, I like it. Yeah, maximize your voice and then, yeah, follow your heart afterward. Yep. Thanks again for being here today and sharing all of your knowledge and insight so far about this field. Yeah, I hope you continue to learn a lot, uh, learn, learn a lot about this and have a lot of fun. Yeah, definitely. Well, thank you again, Lee, for inviting me uh, to join your channel and, and speak to the audience. Uh, uh, it's, a, it's a pleasure uh, sharing my experience and talking to you. And uh, yeah, have a great day.